So before I started working on the bar, uh, I made a lot of notes. I feel like I'm lacking in my carpentry skills, so I really needed to figure out the angles in my head and on paper before I started. And the way I worked, I basically took the measurement of the small refrigerator that was gonna be fitting behind the bar, and I based everything off of that. I got the basic framing done for where I wanted my shelves to be and where that space was gonna go for that little refrigerator. I basically did it all with two by four construction. Kind of working slowly through it, I just kind of pieced everything together bit by bit. I built the shelves out of a pine plywood that I would eventually stain and the work surface is also a half inch pine. Uh, I stained that and also sealed that using a water-based polyurethane. I was then able to slide the refrigerator into place and it fit nice. I left about half an inch of space all the way around. Then I used particle board to surface the front face of the bar. And basically my plan was to treat the face of the bar just like I did the accent wall. I still had some wood left over just for this purpose. I painted it black and using a brad nailer put the boards in place. I added a power strip in the backsplash. To power my amplifier for my sound refrigerator and eventually I'd be putting in under counter lights as well. Once I got my backsplash in place it was time to move on to the bar top and I got to give a shout out to the YouTube channel Michael Builds. He does an awesome job at explaining how to do a concrete countertop. I'll leave a link down to his video below. I figured it'd be smart to start with cardboard template just so I had the dimensions right. I made the mold out of this stuff called melamine. It's the same stuff that they make shelving units out of. Uh, it's basically like a, a composite wood that's coated with a plastic, white plastic coating. That's perfect for creating a smooth surface with concrete. The mold had to be created in inverse since the bottom is going to be the top of the bar top. And because they don't sell melamine in sheets big enough for my bar top, I had to have seams and build this mold in multiple pieces. So I'd never seen this done before in all the research that I did, but I figured I would just cover the seam with heavy duty packing tape. And in my head, that seemed like it should hold and most likely leave a minor visible seam on the finished bar top, which for me is okay. And in watching the instructional video over on Michael Build's channel, he doesn't use any steel reinforcement, but I wanted the extra insurance policy and peace of mind since this piece is gonna be so big and kind of awkward to move. So once you start mixing concrete, there is no stopping, especially because I'm using a quick set mortar mix. So I got all of my pieces in place. I got my water, my cleaning water, my mortar bags opened, and I'm using a packet of set control and flow control for each 55 pound bag of concrete. Flow control is gonna give me more of a pancake batter consistency. It's a plasticizer, it makes the concrete more liquid. Set control buys me about another 15 to 20 minutes of curing time. Gives me a little bit of peace of mind. I started with a quick dose of WD-40 on the mold to make sure that it releases the concrete easy. Wiped it down. Now I mixed my concrete in five gallon buckets using a drill with a paddle on it. At the end of the mixing the first 55 pound bag of concrete, I noticed that the drill started smoking a little bit, so it was getting worked hard. By the time I was done with the second bag of concrete, it was really smoking heavy. And my wife helped out here by tapping the side of the mold with a hammer to release the air bubbles that might form on the bottom of the concrete. Now it was this point in time that it was about the tail end of mixing the third 55 pound bag of concrete when the drill, smoking heavy, literally burst into flames. So if you're thinking about doing this, here's a tip for you. Get yourself a good, powerful drill. Sadly, this drill has seen its final days. I wish I had the camera pointing at me when that happened. Kind of went into panic mode, but I had no choice. I had to keep going. So we quickly put the steel screen reinforcement in place, buried it into the concrete. I grabbed another drill, mixed up the little bit more that I needed, quickly dumped it into the mold. I then kind of smoothed over what would be the bottom of the bar top. 
So in total, I used three bags and a little bit more. So I'd estimate this thing to weigh about 170 pounds. A few hours later, and with the help of a couple neighbors, we were able to move it out back and pop the mold off. And I couldn't be happier with the way it turned out. And those seams that I've been worried about are gonna blend in really nice once I get this thing stained and sealed. After doing a little research, I settled on this concrete stain that I found on Amazon. This is an acid stain, and you can apply it different ways. You can put on a nice even coat, or like I'm doing here, you can blot it on with a sponge. And basically, you just blot it on and allow it to pull up in certain areas. And that kind of adds to the texture. And then let it sit for about three hours and put a second coat on, and this time I sprayed it on to even it out a little bit. It then sat for an additional four hours in my backyard and then I hosed it off and using a combination of water, baking soda to neutralize the acid and a little dish detergent, gave it a good bath. And man, I love the way this thing looks. I just love the color and the texture of this thing. And then again, with the help of a few neighbors, we moved the bar into place. I used liquid nails underneath to keep the bar in place. But honestly, at 170 pounds, I don't think this thing's going anywhere. I then coated the bar with a couple of coats of a water-based polyurethane as a primary sealer. I then laid down some paper because the last thing I'm gonna do is coat it with a two-part epoxy and this is gonna be messy. I used a glaze coat from a company called Famo Wood that I picked up at Home Depot. It's a two-part epoxy. It comes with bottle of resin and bottle of hardener. I ended up making two pints of this stuff, which is more than I'll need. Following the very specific directions on the box, you're supposed to mix them, stir for exactly six minutes, pour it into a second container, and then stir for an additional six minutes. Then, with the help of my wife, you basically just pour it all over your surface that you want to coat and spread it around to get it even. And you got about 15 minutes of work time before it starts to really set up and harden. So you got to move quick. Once you got the whole surface coated, you're supposed to hit it with either a blowtorch or a heat gun or a hair dryer to get rid of the bubbles as they form. And I'm also going around and collecting the drips that come off the sides. After three days of curing time, this bar was ready. I added some under counter lighting and aside from a few pieces of trim, this project is done. So it's been about three months and a lot of work, but I'm thrilled with the way this project turned out. What was once an awkward, unused space has been transformed into easily my favorite room in the house. I had a vision from the beginning, and with the help of our outstanding contractor, I was able to bring that to life. I think if nothing else, I kinda hope that this series might serve as inspiration for somebody else. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and take on a project, even if you lack the experience. There's always a first time for everything. So thanks for joining me on this journey and tuning in. And again, thanks for watching.